this is a, a basic introduction on how to choose a microcontroller board for your project. So Matt was talking about uh, the BeagleBone, which is one of the boards I'll mention, and the Pi, which I'll also mention. We're going to mention a few other boards as well. So we're currently seeing an explosion in boards coming onto the market. And it doesn't seem to be any reason to expect over the next year or two, we're going to see any slowdown in that trend. And that trend's driven by Kickstarter. It's driven by crowdfunding. In fact, I'm anything, I'm expecting to see more new boards, not less. Of course, a fair number of these boards are just going to disappear. So if you invest your time in learning that platform, you're going to waste your time. So you have to, you have to choose a board with community behind it. Um, and it's actually rather hard to differentiate between these boards, not just for the beginner, but for the, uh, a fairly advanced user as well. Because sometimes the differences aren't really going to matter a whole lot depending on what your project is. So as, recent as uh, recently as six months ago, the choice is actually going to be fairly simple. If you want to talk to arbitrary bits of hardware, your best bet was to buy an Arduino board. Uh, if you need the power of uh, an ARM-based board or like a, uh, a full Linux computer, you probably wanted to buy a Raspberry Pi. And that is, if you could get your hands on one. Until fairly recently, it was actually quite hard to buy one at uh, Raspberry Pi. But some people have been waiting for up to six months. And while I'm going to talk about some of the alternatives, if you just want to wander off now, if that's it, if that's your time, that's still pretty good advice. Um, because there's a whole bunch of community behind these boards. And if you go to Google and you have a problem, then someone's probably already found and solved your problem, which is a really important part of like, getting stuff done. Anyway, let's talk about the uh, microcontroller boards and the Arduino in specifically. So I love the Arduino. I, 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 I think it's a great board. Every so often, a piece of technology becomes a lever. You know, the, you can move the, lets you move the world just a little bit. And the Arduino is one of these levers. Um, it started off as a project to give artists um, access to embedded microprocessors for interactive installations. Uh, but I think it's actually going to end up in the science museums as one of the fundamental building blocks of the next industrial revolution. Because if you go to Kickstarter and you look at any major electronics project there, it's pretty much an Arduino-derived uh, project. It's like at the heart of it, there's an Arduino-compatible device. It allows rapid, cheap prototyping for embedded systems. And it turns what used to be fairly tough projects into simple software. And as we all saw from the Valley, simple software scales really easily. So the Arduino is an 8-bit microcontroller. It's based around an Atmel 18 mega. And like all development boards, it breaks out digital pins, analog pins, um, and other pins from the controller to allow you to easily access these from software. Its footprint is a bit idiosyncratic, so you can't just stick it directly into a breadboard. But weirdly enough, this footprint has become popular enough that it's becoming a de facto industry standard. There's other boards not based around the Atmel uh, processor are actually coming to use this form factor because there's so many add-on devices for the Arduino. Um, it's a solid dev platform, not just for the beginner, but for advanced use as well. But strangely enough, perhaps the real power of the Arduino system isn't the hardware. Instead, it's the Arduino development environment. And while there are many other boards offering similar functionality, the Arduino has done probably the best uh, job of wrapping all of the power and difficulty of microcontroller development down into a simple piece of software. And because of that, it spawned a huge number of imitators and clones, and it's drawn a huge community around it. And that's one of the points I'm going to try and make over and over again. It's a community is a really important thing for a board. So this is one of the alternatives. While the Arduino is based around the At uh, Atmel processor, this, this is the TI Launchpad. It's based around the Texas Instruments MSP430. And the MSP430 is actually a pretty similar chip to the Atmel 80 Mega. Um, but there are some differences. And one of the really important differences here is that the MSP430 has really low power consumption. If you want to put, use a board and it has easy accessible it's for sleep functionality, so you can make the processor go to sleep and not use, well, hardly any power at all. So if your, uh, if your project's going to sit with a battery for years at a time, this is actually a really good choice of board. Um, the big problem, until, at least until recently, for the launch pad and the MSP430 was the programming environment. There's been a whole generation of makers that have grown up with the Arduino programming environment that meant it was really easy to access the board. And until recently, Ardu uh, programming the launch pad was an Eclipse-based thing. You had to use Eclipse, which if you were not a big software guy, that was not a good thing to do. Um, this is solved with the arrival of Energia, 
Um, yes, it's the same name as the rocket, and it has a nice little rocket symbol on the icon. Um, it says cross-platform support. It's Windows, OS X, Linux. It looks pretty much exactly like the Arduino IDE. You can use pretty much the same code you used with the Arduino. So it suddenly made the, made the launch pad and the MSP430 a lot more accessible to, to beginners, which is really cool. Um, so that's the, the two microcontroller boards I'm going to talk about. Let's talk about single board computers. So single board computers existed well before the arrival of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I was using something called a gum stick board, which was the size of a stick of gum, hence the name, uh, which came out of Germany for about 10 years ago for various projects. However, like the Arduino before it, the Raspberry Pi has basically single-handedly rebooted the whole market for single board computers. Um, and like the Arduino before it, it's, it's great, created a whole bunch of imitators. Not necessarily clones here, because the, board, uh, the board's sufficiently complicated that you don't want to clone it. But it's created a whole bunch of imitators and other single board computing projects. And there's a whole bunch of these around now in Maker Faire today that you wouldn't have seen two years ago, because they just wouldn't have existed without the Pi. Um, but unlike the Arduino, the, the Pi was never designed for makers. This was a board uh, built by a British charitable foundation for educational purposes. It was supposed to go into schools to serve as a programming environment for kids. Um, and it suffers for that. It's not designed to talk to hardware. Um, however, at 35 bucks, well, it's pretty much a no-brainer if you want to talk to hardware from a single board computer, and you're, your uses are pretty limited. So as I said, the, the Pi is a large step up from the Arduino in terms of processing power. It's designed to run Linux. It's got a lot of the same interfaces, a regular computer, HDMI, Ethernet, USB. Basically, this is a little computer on the board. The name says it all. It's a single board computer. So programming for the Pi is very similar than programming on any other, uh, uh, your laptop or um, uh, anything else like that. It's just, it runs off an SD card, it boots Linux, you log in uh, via Secure Shell, or you attach a monitor and a keyboard, and you, you bring up a desktop. Um, so, but as I said, uh, so it's got all of general, it's got some general purpose pins, but it, it, talking to arbitrary hardware is actually pretty hard, which is where this board comes in. This is the BeagleBone, again from Texas Instruments. And this was designed from the ground up to talk to hardware. And you can see there's a whole lot of extra breakout pins down either side that weren't visible on the, the Raspberry Pi. Um, so the original version of this board was pretty expensive. It was like 89 bucks. And that was just too much of a difference from the 35 bucks of the, the Pi. But as Matt mentioned earlier in the talk, if you were there, this is the BeagleBone Black. It's fairly new. It came out, I think it was the tail end of last year, maybe. And it's 45 bucks. Um, it's a step up from the Pi. It's got a faster processor. It's got built-in storage, as well as the SD card. Uh, but like the Pi, it runs Linux, it has the HDMI, and it has, you know, it has access for standard computer peripherals. So a quick summary. So uh, this is the Arduino board. It's 25 to 30 bucks, 20 digital pins, 12 analog pins. This is the TI Launchpad. And one of the other attractive features is the price. It's 10 bucks directly from TI. It's got 14 digital pins, eight analog pins. It's got those sleep features I was talking about. Um, and then on the single board computers, you've got the, uh, the Raspberry Pi, which is actually 25 bucks if you don't want Ethernet, or 35 bucks if you want Ethernet. And it's only got eight digital pins. But it does have all those other computer interfaces. And then the a big step up, a step up is the BeagleBone Black, which is 45 bucks, just 10 more bucks than the Raspberry Pi, but it has 65 digital pins and six, seven analog pins. So if you want to talk to hardware from a Linux, uh, Linux, um, the Linux side, then possibly the BeagleBone is where you want to look. That isn't the end of the story, however. Um, announced earlier in the year at Maker Faire Bay Area, and actually available in the US for the first time here. It's in the Maker Sheds over that way somewhere. Um, is the uh, Arduino Yoon. Uh, and I'll get into trouble if I don't say Yoon correctly. Um, it's the first in a series of Linux embedded boards to come from Arduino. It comes with integrated Wi-Fi. It's fundamentally actually an Arduino Leonardo on one side uh, with a separate MIPS lin Linux board on the other side. And there's a bridge library to talk to, to between the two sides. So you can put all your networking on the Linux side and do your Arduino stuff that talks to hardware on the Arduino side. 
And it's it's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, it's you can program it remotely via Wi-Fi. It's got the usual USB cable. It is 69 bucks, but you do get a Linux board and an Arduino board simultaneously. So that's maybe not such a bad price. Um, finally, then it's, this is not in full production. It's that their crowdfunding campaign is actually still running. Uh, this is the Tesla microcontroller board from the Dragon Innovation guys over in the, the tent over there. That's actually their crowdfunding platform. The cool thing about this board is it's actually starting a whole new community. This runs JavaScript Interpreter uh, built around the Lua runtime, which is compatible with Node.js for any of the web programmers in the audience here. This effectively runs an event loop on the bare metal of the processor. It comes with built-in Wi-Fi, and it's, it's a board that's designed from the ground up to be used in the Internet of Things. And it's going to be really interesting to see if it brings the JavaScript community with it. And th there's a lot of new makers there uh, if it does, and that's pretty cool. So I saw one, one minute uh, timeline at the back going up. So is there any questions? I'm happy to take them. Nope. I must have said it real well, Alan. Thank you. <laughs>